Uh, but what I really love about um, what I, how I got into the Marvel Cinematic Universe was um, I am a huge fan of Robert Downey Jr. to begin with because he did Chaplin. And yeah. when I found out he was going to be um, Iron Man, I was like, okay, like, <laughs> shut up and take my money. I don't care. <laughs> um, I've seen every Marvel Cinematic Universe at least uh, 20 times. Avengers, I went to go see 14 times in theaters, but I only paid for five because I was smart. <laughs> <laughs> you figure it out. I, I'm not going to tell you. It's okay. What's up? I'm an employee of Cineplex, so I can basically figure out how you could have done that. <laughs> it's called women. <laughs> So, all right. So, what's your, what's everybody's on the panel's favorite Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, and why? Probably, I don't want to say the Avengers right off the bat, but if I had to go with like individual films, uh, Captain America: First Avenger. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. I actually, I actually have liked every single one of the Cap costumes he's had, possibly with the exception of the, of the, uh, uh, the uh, shell suit thing. Yeah, the kind of stealthy, I, I can't remember what they call the Agent Rogers suit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and that's mostly because I per, I am perfectly happy seeing him in bright blue. I know a lot of people like are, get turned off by the, uh, uh, you know, the brighter pastel color, well, pastel colors, the brighter colors in general of superhero stuff, but I think they got it down perfectly. Superheroes should be bright, they should be colorful, they should be uh, uh, embracing what they are. And you know what? It is symbolic because Amer because America's coming and punching evil in the face, <laughs> even if it doesn't always reflect that in reality. <laughs> uh, for myself, I'd say probably Iron Man One. Uh, the main reason I like Iron Man One the most is Robert Downey Jr. There's such charisma in his role, and he just he is Tony Stark from now until the day that he dies. He will be remembered for the drug problems he had, but then how he blew his life up and became Tony Stark. And just the fact that whenever he does a Comic Con, he walks around. He's not right now here. He's totally stuck when he walks around. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Plus the fact that, um, what's the guy, uh, Jeff Bridges? Did he play the Obadiah Saint? Was that yeah. him? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That, I love Iron Monk. Then just when he stands up and part of he's that big motherfucker right at the end. I love the look of the Iron Monger costume. And plus, Jarvis is, I think, the funniest in, that, in the first one. Yeah. So yeah, that would be my favorite. I should probably go back. Uh, I I won't talk about the costume. The reason why I like Captain uh, Captain America: First Avenger the most is because they really captured the essence of Captain America in general, and it, it can all be summed up in one line. Some movies, some really great movies, if they, they have like the one line, one line of dialogue that says someone smart wrote this and kn knows what they're doing, and for that, it really encapsulates the entirety of Captain America. I don't want to kill anyone. I just don't like bullies. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Uh, my favorite. Uh, I actually have two favorites. I can't. I can't compete between the two of them because I love them both so much. Um, the first one being uh, Thor, the original Thor, but only because I think that in order to introduce Thor, um, nobody could have directed it as well as Kenneth Branagh did. I think that the way that the magic versus science and how they meshed that together. If it had been anybody but Kenneth Branagh, I don't think they could have pulled it off because he knows how to be over the top because Shakespeare. And, um, you know, so I really love Thor. The only thing I really didn't like about Thor, but I forgave it for, was that the whole Jane Foster Thor thing felt so Hollywood. And it felt so tacked on for me. And I was just like, you know, I don't really care about their relationship. I only really care that she's trying to get, you know, and I, I only really care that she's there because she's supposed to be there because Jane Foster, because they needed a woman and whatever. But um, in terms of the story, I really like the story and I really like how they did Thor. The other one that's really a competing factor for me is actually uh, Captain America the Winter Soldier. Um, best knife fights in the universe. <laughs> no <laughs> lie. Um, I, I actually, I have, I have, uh, I have background in stage combat, um, and uh, all of my friends work at a Renaissance fair, and they fight for a living. So uh, when we went to go all see it, um, all of us were like, "Holy crap, we need to do those fights, you guys!" <laughs> um, but I really loved, um, I loved how they took Steve Rogers, who is from World War II, and I really love how they. Um, took him and put him in a situation that we can relate to with the whole, you know, oh my god, they're going to take over our media and all that jazz. 
Um, and I really love how they dealt with that as a, as a whole. And, um, you know, a lot of people said, oh, I don't like it because it's so government meta, whatever. I'm like, you know what? It's Captain America. He works for S.H.I.E.L.D. Shut the hell up. <laughs> Question is that. Well, I've heard a lot of people, and I, I agree with this, but I've heard people calling it a 70s political drama with Captain America, and I really like that they took that angle. Yeah, the fact yeah. that it's like Day of the Falcon with like, or with sorry, the Falcon Condor, yeah. with like, at shield helicarriers, uh, was kind of awesome, I thought. Yeah. Can I say, one of the things I think I really liked about uh, the Winter Soldier is that the Black Widow was actually the Black Widow. Yes. Yeah, she was going to do something. Yes. She was going to hit him like a spy. Yes. And, you know, in the same vein, Nick Fury wasn't just Sam Jackson with a sweet eye patch, he was Nick Fury. You know, when yeah. it got to the point where at the end, when they're talking about the security clearance, and Fury looks and goes, I wiped your clearance, I'm sitting there going, yeah, for the one you know about your 12 more, he has. <laughs> <laughs> That was my month. I think that was my only major disappointment with Winter Soldier, which was we didn't actually have like model decoys. Yeah. <laughs> They'll show up in Shield Agent or Season Two. You watch. I should because because that's the other thing. Uh, the two things I haven't seen are Incredible Hulk and Agents of Shield, which is my entire. It's entirely my own fault for not watching it yet. But I do love that they actually apparently uh, integrated uh, that that scene with Fury in the car. And for those who haven't seen Winter Soldier, I'm not going to spoil it. Well, it's in the trailer. Yeah. Is it in the trailer? It yeah. is. I don't recall Sorry. being in the trailer. But either way, the car scene apparently was both in Shield, Agents of Shield, and in the movie. And the fact they were able to integrate them both in together and have this, you know, linking together. I, I want to meet the person who's actually responsible for coordinating this stuff and just shake their hand. Yeah, they've done a really good job. Blue hat? Uh, speaking of tying in Agents of Shield with the universe. How do, you, um, how do you think the characters are going to react to finding out that Coulson is, uh, sorry, Linkara spoilers. I know about that part. That, that, that was in the trailer right away. Yeah. yeah. Uh, being director of S.H.I.E.L.D. now. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, so, my whole thing about Phil, son of Cole, because I refuse to call him anything else, <laughs> is, is that, um, my whole thing with him is I'm really happy that he's director of S.H.I.E.L.D. now because I really like that, I, my theory is that Nick Fury is just like, you know what guys, I, I love you guys, well I really don't love you, I just think that you guys are just an asset to me and that's always how Nick Fury is thought. But I really think that he's about to go ha have Secret Wars happen and I really think that's the direction they're going with. And for those of us who've read Secret Wars... Yeah, well, you know, let's Wars. distinguish here, Secret Wars or Secret War? Whichever, man. Because Secret War is the one where S.H.I.E.L.D. is doing the assassinations thing. Oh yeah, the Secret, Secret Wars the, 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 is the is the, the slay your enemies and I will give you whatever you want. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with you and say probably Secret War because assassination sounds more with this Fury style, yeah. if that makes sense. But with the other Avengers, I, I honestly think that the only Avenger that I think he really wants to tell in person is Captain America because of how much he loves Captain America. And I really think that he's going to punch Nick Fury in the face for getting blood all over his cards. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you. Uh, I was going to say, going back to the whole secret war thing for a minute, after walking out of, uh, of the Winter Soldier, I went on Tumblr, and I actually followed Bendis on Tumblr. And I messaged him, and I was like, so is Nick going off to wage a war in secret? Like, is there a team of secret warriors to come with him? <laughs> um, he never got back to me, so I, I, I'm hoping we're actually getting a secret warriors movie. Avengers 2 is going to be like Secret Warriors now. <laughs> oh, God. So now we've talked about our favorites. Now we've got to talk about our least favorites. Oh. And you're, and you're going to hate me for this one. Uh-oh. So I'll start, because it'll probably draw the most fire. I hated Thor, the first one. Ooh. The bloody Strider. It was so fucking boring. But okay, now we've got to go to the typical Marvel Universe so stuff. I can bitch what they made in Spider-Man 2 until the cows come. <laughs> um, fuck that movie. Um, to, to, to me, the first Thor, you're right though, it needed to be directed by Kenneth Branagh, it needed to establish the universe yes. to make it part of the MCU. But the thing is, I was so goddamn bored after the and, first 20 minutes. Yeah, I'm like, geez, can something happen All right. Now, Chris Hemsworth, wonderful actor, great charisma, and I love the fact when he has that line about, bring me a, a dog that I can ride. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny, but I, always, I thought the end game with the Destroyer was lame, and Loki in that movie was lame. Loki was awesome in the Avengers. And Down, girl, girl, why did you say that? I actually gave a shit. 
about Loki in Dark World. And yeah, actually, absolutely. actually, Dark World changed my mind on the entire Thor thing. I actually started reading the comics because of Dark World. Okay, oh, hey, you want a great Loki story? The new series, Loki, Agent of Asgard. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm going to both agree and disagree with you because the thing is, Thor is my, my, my least favorite. The thing is, I don't hate any of them. The real problem with Deeper Thor is that it's just too basic. Yes. I mean, I, I appreciate a lot of it. It's still a good, in my opinion, it's still a good movie. I like the fact that Thor has an arc. Yeah. And, he, and, you know, clear transformation. And Loki, I think, is just downright awesome in, in the movie because it establishes character and you really feel for him. And, he, and even when he's, even when he, you know, realizes his true heritage, he's still trying to abide by what he thinks would be best for Asgard. And in this case, it's you kill all the Frost Giants. You're just like but, but, but in this case, the thing is, it's just too simple. And I probably and I do agree with you about the ending fight with the uh, the destroyers kind of like not really living up living up to uh, the potential with that kind of knockout uh, drag out fight. But uh, I mean, it's not. I don't think it's a bad movie. I mean, I actually still I like Iron Man too. So what do I know? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, well, this is cool. I like the war machine. I love the, I love the suitcase armor. No, I'm sorry, uh, Jess needs to uh, say her. Um, no, go ahead, ask your question first, that's fine. Just, um, I love both Thor movies, but uh, the biggest issue that almost ruined both of them for me was Kat Denning. And, uh, yes. I was like, She's funny in the second one! <laughs> no, 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 I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Darcy no, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I know the whole thing about, you know, Darcy saying meow meow, I know, but... I have this thing about how Darcy is the best character who's a civilian who understands that her world is so vastly changed because of what happens in Thor. And she kind of just takes it in stride. And here's the thing, I lived in New York City for two years and I walked around that place and I'm like, you know, it would really suck if, it suck if one day we walked into Earth 616. We'd be so screwed. We would have so many property taxes, it would be ridiculous. I would gladly support the Sentinel program at that point, protect me from scary monsters. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Avon, and then I'll tell you guys what my first one and my least favorite is. Go ahead. Uh, well, I think that I didn't come out of it, and I love Kenneth Brona, but I feel like he wasn't sure who he was making that movie for. Because you had the very high Shakespearean dramas happening in Asgard. And then you had everything happening on Earth where they were all kind of like sassy, young people, kind of a sitcom type thing. So it kind of felt like they just sort of threw Shakespeare into a blender with like See, see, that's how I feel about Thor. I feel like the whole line in Avengers when Tony Stark goes Shakespeare in the park, I feel like that's exactly what Thor is. Thor is freaking Shakespeare if Thor was if Shakespeare was in the Marvel Universe and had superpowers. That's basically what he is. And I feel like that, I mean, do you agree with that assessment? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like the way that Kenneth Branagh directed it, he directed it like a Shakespeare movie because that's exactly what he knows how to do and that's why he was asked to do the movie. But I think because he directed it like a Shakespeare movie, it gave that universe that serious grounding. Because you're talking about some pretty weird concepts. Oh, yeah. Introduced into a universe where there's suits of armor and dudes with super serum. It kind of blends that science and magic thing, and it worked. Yeah. The problem with Thor, in my opinion, was the pacing. And like I said, it's a little too simple. But... Um, okay, so my least favorite film, and uh, I'm going to catch a lot of flack for this probably, but I absolutely hated Iron Man 3. You do have a mixed response from people because some people, oh, some people, some people when they mentioned Cat Denning, she, uh, people were, were, some people were cheering and some people were like hissing. Yeah. So, that's, um, a great, that's a great thing. We're, we can all have. I mean, we're doing such a even because there are so many movies in the in the cinematic universe. They have we have this ability to say I just didn't like this all that much, and we're able to agree to disagree about it because we all agree that there are a lot of good ones in there too. Yeah, my biggest problem with Iron Man three wasn't the whole. Um, was actually not until the very end, and I know that a lot of people are going to hate me for this, but I kind of hated Pepper having superpowers for however long she had them. Well, I they really have in the comics. Also, God, she, 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 she should have never. She should have never had them. It should have. Oh, Pepper. To me, Pepper is supposed to be the the grounding state of Iron Man. Like she is supposed to be there to make make him feel like even though his world is 
freaking crazy that she will be there and say, you have a 10 o'clock. You know, I feel like she getting superpowers was kind of nice in terms of revenge against, you know, Guy Pierce. But in other things, I really didn't like it. I really thought it was forced in some places. And I really felt like, yeah, she was badass, but at the same time, I don't think that um, as some of the fans were ready for it. Okay, you in the back? How did you guys feel about how they handled the banner at the end of I actually kind of thought some of that was actually really clever. And with the one shot, that kind of follows that. Yeah, there was, there was like a, some some movie or something that like uh, followed up on it and said, oh yeah, he was the Mandarin the whole time. Yeah, it, yeah. Well, it, it's kind of like how Ben Kingsley is, he's in prison as Trevor or whatever, and these guys break in to break him out. He's like, the real Mandarin wants to see you to set the record straight. Uh, and I think, all right, that's actually really kind of badass, because Marvel, they took a gamble of that, because the Mandarin is such an iconic villain of Iron Man, and they turned what she, it was kind of a joke in Iron Man 3, but I thought it was a really cleverly played joke. Hmm. Mm. Although, like I was saying, Guy Pierce should not be your end game. Yeah. But A was cool, though. Although I wish they had the bubble B suit guys. <laughs> 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 and and, and I, I, it, it is this keeps this thing that just keeps happening because I just I, I see that I see a Guy Pierce in there and like I want to talk to you about advanced idea mechanics. I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> Um, although, although, here's what I will disagree with you on. It's not that, for me, it's not that Pepper got superpowers. It's that they got rid of her superpowers afterwards. She and, got better. And Tony said that he would fix her. There's nothing wrong with her. She can frickin', she has, she can shoot fireballs out of her hand and stuff. Yeah, I kind of wonder if well, she was well, extremist. Yeah, that's the, that's the Extra, thing. Yeah, extremist. Uh, extremist I, 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 I don't think that's the kind of thing. There's nothing wrong with her. She shouldn't be fixed. She yeah. should be willing to, to fight alongside Tony for these kind of things. In fact, I'm more disappointed. I'm also disappointed that she didn't wield the armor longer in an actual fight, as opposed to just wearing it for, uh, uh, oh, yeah. for the protection. I, I mean, I have no problem with her in armor. I just thought that, like, I think that if she's going to be in armor, she should just, like, they should have picked one. They shouldn't have done both, because I feel like both was too much. It's the same problem I have with Spider-Man 3, and the same problem that I'm probably going to have when I finally see Amazing Spider-Man 2, which probably will not be soon, because I've heard Terrible. <laughs> um, you, you, sir, in the back have been really, really patient, so go ahead. Well, uh, the, the problem I had with Iron Man 3 is I couldn't help but think, oh, there is a terrorist threatening Tony Stark. If only there was some kind of, like, a worldwide espionage organization. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, we're going to the world. Although the thing is, even though that question was entered in the answered in the Winter Soldier, I still think it's kind of bad that you have to watch another movie just to get the answer that you were beg for the question that was begging to be asked in one movie. Well, it's kind of like how they get you to buy the next comic book theme next month. This is it's kind of the same problem I was kind of having during both Winter Soldier and Iron Man Three, which because of course they were both post Avengers. Why the hell aren't they calling anybody, uh, uh, anyone else up? Now, of course, you're not going to call Thor up for this kind of thing. Yes. But, but, but during Iron Man 3, I, I was just like, when is he, when's he going to call Cap? When, when, it, when is Hulk going to show up, like, working in the lab? Or, or in the case of Winter Soldier, why the hell aren't they calling Tony Stark? Because Tony Stark is off the grid. He's away from S.H.I.E.L.D. And he's someone they can trust. They don't even, have them on, on their my five Or even, like, a certain pajamas eating cereal. Yeah. yeah, I mean, okay, and, and that's like my biggest problem with, like, a lot of people, oh, and this is my biggest problem with the Avengers, and it has nothing to do with the Avengers, um, I hated that people were like, oh, Hawkeye was so useless in the Avengers, people told me that, and I was like, people have actually told me that, and I'm like, okay, I'm sorry, he took out the helicarrier almost single-handedly, shut your mouth, just shut your mouth. He was a bad guy at the time, wasn't he? It doesn't matter. It was still he has was the awesome. clearance. He has the clearance, yeah. shield wise. He has the level clearance, and he he can put up a decent fight. And he has the he has the capability of taking out an entire helicarry carrier that both Maria Hill and Nick Fury are on. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter whether he was evil or not. The fact that he actually did it is just prudent to how how powerful he actually is, despite not having. Well, and he was taking out flyers left and right. Yeah, that. exactly. Yeah. He's Batman played by a better actor. <laughs> no, because, no, that's not true because Hawkeye does not make as much money. Let's be real. <laughs> and her parents are done! This is a bit of a I have because I hear people all the time going, Batman is so cool because he keeps up with all these heroes without having any powers. But then they turn around and say, Hawkeye is so lame because he doesn't have any powers. It's like, Make up your mind. <laughs> yeah, you Batman does have a superpower. He's ultra rich. <laughs> I mean, if you're ultra rich, like, like how many people here? Should
like a lot of money, wouldn't you spend time making yourself a super weapon? Yeah. Oh god, yeah. yes. See, like, so, 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 let's, so, let's be real, Batman is secretly who we all wish to be if we were all super rich. Let's be real. I'd be Victor Von Doom. <laughs> Yeah, you'd have your collection of Doombots any time on you acted out of character. Oh, that was just a robot. It's not Liberian, that. It doesn't work. Um, <laughs> so other parts of the MCU, as we've discussed, is stuff like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And Winter Soldier changed everything. Yeah. And how these movies are all, all interconnected. Now, in April of this year, uh, Shield, or Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. did an episode called The, Begin the End of the Beginning. We're basically... Hot hail hydra. Shit happens. Shit goes down. And the fact that ABC synced that with the movie so well, they actually played that episode two weeks in a row, so everyone could get caught up. And then the next episode, was episode Fallout, I think it's called Beginning of the End or End of the Beginning, something like that. And it dealt with the fallout with Hydra infiltrating Shield so deeply. Mm. And you found out about uh, the character of Jasper Sitwell, who was a Hydra sleeper agent, and that senator played by Gary. Channeling was a guy too the whole time. So you look back on the Marvel one shots, for example, the consultant yes. Sitwell's involved in that. So you have to wonder how many shady shield dealings were actually Hydra operations. I do wonder how far back they planned a lot of this stuff, especially with the senator guy. Yeah. Like, like, did they have in mind already in Iron Man two that he was going to be? Uh, Hydra agent, or, or, or they just decide, well, this works well for us, let's make him a Hydra Well, it makes sense, because you think about it, he was trying to shut down the Iron Man program to steal the technology, yeah. and he's like, yeah, it's an advanced uh, prosthetic, and that's how Tony got around it, so I'm thinking, Hydra has, if you look back on some of the movies, they've always kind of been there, if you look at it, post-Winter Soldier now. Yeah. And I always thought that was actually really, really clever. What That's I, kind of what made me love the Marvel Universe that much more. And what I really love about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is, um, what's his name, Triplet, the, the guy who joins them after? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so there's this agent, Triplet, for those of you who don't know. Um, there, There's actually a line said in one of the episodes, I think, um, with uh, when uh, they announced that Patton Oswalt was going to be guest starring as an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And uh, during that episode, uh, they're, they're, they're doing this thing, and I'm not going to give it away, but in the middle of it, he goes, you know, my grandfather was a howling, a howling commando. And I go, yes! Oh my god, they're <laughs> linking it! Never forgotten! That's right! So, you know... I do wonder if they're going to expand on Nick Fury's backstory so that he was still a member of the Howling Commando. I, you know, I, I, I kind of like the fact that they're not alluding to it because I've always found Nick Fury really secretive and I think that not having a backstory other than he's freaking Nick Fury. They'll <laughs> touch on it in Agent Carter or something. I'm sure they will because, oh, oh, how many of you are actually excited for Agent Carter? Because if you're not, I'm sorry. I'm pretty hyped for that. Oh, I love, I'm so excited. I do love how we have these spinoffs, like, only after one movie. <laughs> why, why didn't Coulson just get his own name spinoff? I, I, I don't think that it would be have been marketable as, um, hey, that guy is back from the dead after being stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> He's back, and this time. <laughs> one of the things that I think Oh, sorry, what? I just want to go back to the, the Hydra thing for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, that's actually been within continuity in the comics since, oh, two, I think, was the Secret Warriors. Mm -hmm. And that was written by Bendis and sitting on the consulting team. So it's very, very possible they had that tweeted right from the start. Yeah, Bendis, Bendis plans long term for his storylines. And I do appreciate the fact that uh, they're bringing in more and more of the comic stuff into the cinematic universe. The great thing about, the, about, about it, the cinematic universe in general, I'm just going to keep saying the great things about it because I love it. Uh, is, is, You're not alone, man. You're is basically, alone. it's all a matter of stripping away all the things that are completely useless and unnecessary about uh, that happened in the comics, and then put in the important stuff, the good stuff, the stuff that works. We have like uh, Winter Soldier stuff. We don't have to have uh, uh, the retcon part of it where he was like, uh, well, no, they kind of have retcons that just from the first uh, Captain America movie. But we don't have to have all the baggage of him being like a prior sidekick or something. He just has to be Cap's best friend. And you get the same emotional kind of uh, connection to him. Yeah. That, and that's the thing about it. They, these writers know how to take away the things that are completely unnecessary in the, from the comics and just keep all the good bits. Now, there's one thing I'd love to get people's opinions on. So, 
look at the Marvel Cinematic Universe as a whole right now. It's like, how many movies do you have? Uh, eight, nine? Eight, nine. Well, so. Let's start it back in 2008 with Iron Man 1, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's right. You look at how movies have now changed. Look, for example, how DC is now rushing to create their cinematic universe. And I think Marvel, despite doing a wonderful thing, will kind of fuck up comic book movies for a while now. Because they all want to have the shared continuity. I mean, like yeah. Flash getting the spinoff from Arrow, that's good, that's cool. But that's yeah. not going to, they're not going to be in Justice League in that form. The problem, like, the problem um, um, with DC stuff is DC has never been great about, about, about the cinematic part of it, especially because they're owned by Warner Brothers, who have their own ideas about how, what they want to do with the properties. It's television where DC yes, tends to shine. Yes, I was just going to say that. I was actually just going to say that, how DC's realm has always been television. It has, um, you know, Green Arrow, um, the first six and a half seasons of Smallville were okay. Um, <laughs> seven had something like that. I mean, seven Justice had, League, Batman, anime, the entire Tim Burton in general. Yeah, they rule yeah, they they anything animated, but in terms of like live action, um, like Smallville had a, had a good run for the first like six and a half years. Some of them in seven were okay. Um, the, the Green Arrow I haven't seen yet, but I've heard really good things. Jarrett keeps telling me to freaking watch it. Arrow is it. amazing. I know. He keeps telling me to watch it, and I'm like, I need to. Squad now, so. And I've How about seen, the Adventures of Super Villains first. I've seen the Flash trailer. I'm really excited about it. I really want to watch it, and I really think that um, Warner Brothers has a good thing with TV. But with Marvel, Marvel I feel has gotten their shit together. Like they know what they're doing. They. Play, they have scripts for like 20 some odd movies in advance. I mean, they're already, people are speculating at Comic Con that we're going to get, um, you know, we're going to get announcements for, you know, who's going to be playing Doctor Strange, who's going to be playing Black Panther. Okay, by the way, I said when they started Iron Man, I said in 2008, I was like, they're going to freaking make a Black Panther movie. And nobody freaking believed me. Because, let's be real, Black Panther is one of the only people in the world who has punched the shit out of the Silver Surfer. <laughs> Um, if Idris Elba was 20 years younger, him. But I, but I would really want a younger guy. I also thought about the guy from Blood Diamond, but because he's in Guardians of the Galaxy, I don't think that'll work. I wish I could get Michael Jai White. Oh, him would he would just after him. Spawn in '97. Yes. yes. <laughs> what are people thought? Who do, do, who do people think should play Doctor Strange? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I think he's too well known. Yeah. The Marvel Cinematic Universe is, with the exception of Robert Downey Jr., a lot of the a lot of the re, of the casting has been relatively unknown in terms of title roles. Like Chris Evans was known for Human Torch, which nobody freaking watched the second one anyway, and not another team movie. Not another team movie, and he was one of the evil exes in Scott Pilgrim. Pilgrim. If you don't remember that, you need to go watch that movie right after this panel. Yeah, right. In fact, I recall. I recall when the uh, when the Captain America movies were first, at first announced and announced Chris Evans, I was worried as all hell because because of the Human Torch connection. Yeah, I hated him in Human uh, the Human Torch. Yeah, but I mean, that's, I think that in terms of people, I think that Death could work as a Doctor Strange, but I really would love to see a relative unknown. Yeah, and I would really love to see like you know, I love how the Marvel Cinematic movies, even though they're independent film company, they've turned this into a huge star-studded thing, and they don't really, they're one of the only independent movie companies before, after the Golden Age of Hollywood that has actually made a name for themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's really interesting in terms of, you know, um, no longer the big five. Now you've been super patient. Here. Yeah, you really have, I'm so sorry. I, a question and a comment. Uh, the question is, do you consider the first Hulk movie to be part of the cinematic universe since it ties in with the second one, which is part of it? And, uh, wait, 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 are we talking about the that? The yeah. One? yeah. Oh, oh god, oh god. Incredible Hulk is a direct sequel to it, and Incredible Hulk is yeah, it's I more understand. a soft reboot. Yeah, it's more of a soft reboot to me. I mean, Ang Lee, um, here's the thing, I like certain things about that movie. Um, I've tried to block most of it out, but um, <laughs> I, I, I liked some of it. I didn't like, um... You poodles. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> poodles. Um, but with Incredible Hulk, I feel like the soft reboot really established a lot, and then the whole bullcrap with, you know, Edward Norton's not coming back because reasons, 
And I was like, you know what, I'm okay with that because I kind of hate him as an actor anyway. And I think Mark... I don't care. Um, I, I think that Mark Ruffalo is a much better Bruce Banner, having seen both of them. I think that Mark Ruffalo does a much better job as the guy who... And here's the thing about Hulk that I really loved in The Avengers. Hulk, even though he refers to him as the other guy, I feel like Bruce understands that even though the Hulk is there and he will always be there, he realizes that the Hulk is there to protect him from things. And I feel like that is a really big understanding connection that, that he needed to have. Well, I think with Mark Ruffalo, the point where he talks about the Hulk trying to commit suicide... Yeah, I think that's a very like, powerful moment. Yeah, they're like you really get the fact that, man, this guy's... Fucked up. Yeah, he's not just, you know, a science bro. He's With, like, Ed Norton, I never got that. I never got that with him, and that's why I hated Ed Norton as Bruce Banner, because he didn't make me feel the connection that he had to the Hulk as something that he didn't want to have. He made me feel like, it's a burden, but I'm dealing with it. That's he's a burden, and there's a support group for him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whereas with Mark Ruffalo, you feel like, it's a burden. And he's tried everything that he can, and he's finally learning to accept it, even though he doesn't want to. And he's growing as a person because of it. And he has more control over it. Uh, yeah, uh, exactly. Th 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 than you would think. Now, of course, he went on that rampage in in the helicarrier, but that was mostly because it was Loki. triggered. It was Loki. It was triggered without uh, w w w when he was under great stress and he couldn't control it. That's but right. but when he's deliberately triggering it, he clearly has you know the ability to listen to people and work with them, and he's still pissed off. Yeah, but, oh, but, yes. but he's but he's enjoying himself. <laughs> he's been really patient. Oh, one great thing about the Marvel Cinematic Universe is that they take minor characters and they make them completely awesome. Which and they make you care about them. They make you care about them. Falcon, Bucky, um... Fuck yeah, Anthony Mackie! Um, <laughs> um, and Iron Man, Iron Man has had some really great uh, side characters. What is your favorite and what do you think should be a good side character that you utilize? Um, okay, uh, well you guys think I totally have this. Um, okay. <laughs> Anthony Mackie as Falcon is kind of the greatest thing in the universe. Um, not just because he's like America's new sweetheart in terms of Marvel, because he's done charades um, as Marvel Cinematic Heroes, which is kind of great, um, but he really owns the role. He really, he really, when I watched um, Winter Soldier, I felt like I was not watching an actor. I really felt like I was watching Falcon like screw around with Captain America. That's what I felt like when they were running with each other, like on your left, like that's stuff that they would do. Like it's totally them. So you know, I feel like he's one of the best side characters. I also feel like um, in Thor, I really liked um, Hawkeye's line of "I'm starting to root for this guy." That made me feel like you know he he understands what's going on and he's a good side character. And then when he stepped up into the Avengers, I was like, you know, now he's a main character, but in Thor, he was still kind of a side character. You know, but I think there's really no side character that I don't like. I just think that Falcon really stands out to me because he's very, um, and he doesn't ask questions. Like when he stops, when Cap and Black Widow stop by his house, he goes, um, orange juice? Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't even like ask questions. He's like, uh, you know, Cap goes, uh, can we hide here? And he goes, hey, I'm making pancakes, cool, Dad? <laughs> Captain America comes at your, at your door, of course you're going to make him pancakes. Because yeah, that's actually... the American thing to do. Oh, well, it's a it's a um, <laughs> like we're pancakes are America, according to Denny's. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going to skip to your error right away, because actually I agree with Jess for pretty much every reason you said. Yeah, Falcon is my favorite. I'm going to go against, I like Coulson, and it's mostly because of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., because I've had the chance, rather than just seeing him develop over two hours, yeah. I've seen him develop over 24. Yeah. And I really get the fact that, the fact that you feel his betrayal, you when do. you see S.H.I.E.L.D. go to hell, and like, oh my god, now what am I going to do? I feel like, but I feel like with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Coulson has really become more of a main character, because, yeah. of, like, that's why I don't call, count him as a side but, character anymore, because... Yeah. He, he grew from a side to a Yeah, he, he did, he, like, Hawkeye did it in a limited amount of time, but I feel like through, halfway through Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I was like, he's a main character. Like, yeah. I can't, yeah, he got stabbed as a side character, but now he's in his own element, and he's okay with, you know, he's yeah. good. Um, How about Borg constantly crapped upon War Machine? 
<laughs> I love War I hate the Iron Patriot armor, but I love the War Machine. I know. I, I, love, love, I, love, War, War, I love War Machine too, but he, but like the universe keeps crap. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> different actors, different. Different actors. The big missile thing doesn't work. He has to, has to suffer through Iron Patriot. Now, here's a question for you. We've talked about the main Marvel Cinematic Universe, the one that we all know and love. Let's expand that a little bit. And here's what I mean. Do you care that Spider Man is not a part of the MCU? I think he's actually there because he's not there. Yeah, yeah he, I don't see him working oh, the shield. Uh, I think some of those are fighting words for some people. Yeah, no. yeah, totally. I, I, I want someone who is against me here. I want a good Spider-Man. Uh, you want the orange oh, version. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and a half. I want Wolverine in the movies. Like, I mean, <laughs> he would work with the way these movies are done. Yeah. Like, I really want my Captain America Wolverine war movie. Spoonie, oh, Spoonie, so Spoonie has talked about this before. The problem, here's the thing, this has always been a constant problem with the Marvel Universe. Mutants just don't work with the main Marvel Universe. They just no, they don't. don't. They don't. The, the, when you have like a high profile team like the Avengers in the comics universe, and then you have people hating and fearing mutants who can like, just like grow a little plant out, out of the ground. They're like, oh crap, we gotta get away from them. They just, it just doesn't work. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's, there's like an inconsistency with the, with, with how people treat them, with how the government treats them, yeah. and it just creates these huge, huge problems. And this is most evident during Civil War, yeah, when you, when mutants seem to be kind of just excluded from the whole thing, and they were just like, yeah, uh -huh, yeah, we, we've been telling you about this guy's this crap for years, so you know what? We're washing our hands of it. Yeah, yeah. Almost, and I feel like um, in terms of Wolverine being in the, I, I would accept. I would be okay with Wolverine in the in in the in the universe for one reason and one reason only. For those of us who have read the Infinity Gauntlet, you know exactly why. <laughs> and for those of us who haven't read the Infinity Gauntlet, I'll tell you why. It's because Wolverine is the only one to land a punch on Thanos. The only one. And I would accept the Hulk just because it would actually be a viable thing if they couldn't get Wolverine. But if they could get Hugh Jackman to agree to punch Thanos in the face, I would be completely fine with that. They can't. Um, in terms of Spider-Man not being part of the universe, I'm actually kind of fine with it because it feels to me like, and we were discussing this last night, it feels to me like they're just trying to rush as many Spider-Man movies as possible because of the contract they have. Um, which they may have canceled the third one now. Yeah, yeah. Which right. based on the, some of the second, yeah. The problem is, is that with with Spider-Man, I feel like. Um, I don't really care about the Tobey Maguire series. I thought Spider-Man 2 was really good. I liked the first Amazing Spider-Man. I didn't see 2, but I really want a freaking Maximum Carnage movie. Yes! yes! Does anybody else like think that, like, I know like right now it doesn't seem like it's ever gonna happen, but if like we got like a group of nerds together to write Maximum Carnage, can we like make this happen? We do it, the problem being we have to pretty much skip all the Venom and Carnage backstory, we just have to jump into it. Well, yeah, so, so, we do all the Chip Carey will the make books. a awesome Cletus so, Cassidy. Actually, Dan Caruso. Caruso. Yes! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome Cletus Cassidy. You know who I would, I would actually pick? Uh, Jackie Earl Haley. But yeah, I can see that. Instead, yeah. But instead of doing the gruff voice, just have him be giggly and crazy. Yeah. <laughs> now, who would you cast as Venom? Because I always picture that big buff muscle version as opposed to... Okay, okay. <laughs> this is going to be a really unpopular opinion, but from what I've seen of Drax the Destroyer, I think that a professional wrestler would actually work. Yeah. Bro, I'm I'm wrestler, wrestler. Wrestler. And I'm going to draw heat for it, so I'm just going to say it. I was talking about this with my friends a few weeks ago. If you could get him to look a little more evil, I think a guy who has the body type of someone like, say, John Cena, as yeah. Venom, but not John Cena because he's too... Yeah, no, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, no, no it's, it's really funny because, you know, a lot of people, um, a lot of people know that I'm a pro professional wrestling fan, and they're like, how do you feel about, you know, Batista being Jax the Destroyer? And I'm like, that is the best casting in the universe because yeah. he actually knows what it's like to beat the shit out of people. <laughs> <laughs> CM Punk's retired from everything because he hates the world. Also, also, he's 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 dating he's married to AJ Lee now, and they have all the sex. Let's be real. Actually, Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns. That's a bad idea. Oh my God, Roman Reigns is so hot. We should get him. Okay, first off, shout out to the five minutes <laughs> maximum just out there. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, since we're 
talking about you know characters that we'd like to see in there, what would you guys think out of anybody in the universe that you'd like to see in like a movie anytime soon? I want to see an, another Punisher movie. Yes. yes. <laughs> there was talk for a while about doing a Punisher TV series and doing it as a police procedural. No. But here's the thing: it could work if it was on AMC or HBO. No. Because if you have the AMC level of violence and you could get Thomas Jane to do it, I mean, he did all of it, so he's not opposed to doing TV. You could introduce this idea, and it wouldn't surprise me because we got about. 13 minutes here left, the new Netflix shows. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I promise you, Punisher's going to show up because the Bryce have now reverted back to Marvel. I'm going to say, they're, they announced a. Uh, 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 I think it's Daredevil. Yeah, Daredevil. Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones Iron Man. Iron Man. Uh, Iron Man. Iron Man. Iron Man. Iron Man. Iron Man. Iron Man. So it wouldn't surprise me if Punisher shows up and they kind of make him work alongside Daredevil, but not, like, we're not buddy buddies, we have a common enemy. Yeah. Uh, what about you? Who do you um, want to see? I really, honestly, um, well, we already know I want to see a Black Panther movie. I'm really excited about that. But the other hero that I really, really want to see, I want to, I'm kind of interested, even though they don't have the rights, I'm kind of interested in seeing a good Dr. Doom. Yes. Um, I, I didn't have a problem with Julian McMahon as Victor Von Doom, but as Dr. Doom, yeah. he, he, like didn't, an he didn't, he didn't, he didn't do it for me. Like, he didn't give me the Neil before Doom crap, you know? I mean, not not to be like completely like you know nerdy or anything, but um, I honestly think that Angry Joe would make a better Doom. Than <laughs> Just because. I don't. I don't. I wasn't referring to that. I was more referring to how we have Scottish people playing Russians. Well, <laughs> well yeah, but like, I, I really like that. Like, they're going, they're going yes. the minority route. I really think that's um, because I think that's more relevant now. There's this great gif of him like get, uh, getting talked to by reporters. Like, what do you think of all, all the people who hate you for the role? They're still going to see it. <laughs> Yes. Because, because here's the thing, while Thor, uh, Thor kind of represents the magic side of things, he doesn't really use magic, he just summons lightning, because that's because he's a god. But we need an actual person who's like casting spells left and right. We yeah. need someone who uh, who is the Sorcerer Supreme. I want to see Dormammu. Yes. Oh, yes. oh yeah. Or Baron Mordo. Oh Baron yeah, Mordo. yeah, yeah. And the thing is, you can, the thing is, I'm actually really surprised they haven't done Doctor Strange yet, because Doctor Strange's is movie <laughs> is just Iron Man, but with magic. You know, it was alluded to in uh, Captain America Winter Soldier, like, they're like, Stephen Strange, like, we should wipe him off the map, and the first thing that popped into my head was like, good fucking luck. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna need a bigger boat now. <laughs> um, you. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering, I, I know that a lot of Marvel movies, they do create their own new storylines, but like we saw with Iron Man 3, Mad Extremis, and then there's gonna be Age of Ultron coming up. What, uh, like, what? Uh, Storylines you want to see them possibly touch on in the future. Infinity Maybe Gauntlet done. <laughs> um, Infinity Gauntlet is really the only thing I'm looking forward to right now, mostly because I want to see how they're going to do death. Because the entire point of Infinity Gauntlet is Thanos impressing the fuck out of death, and she go and she not actually talking to him. Who do you think would play a good death? I don't think that anybody should play a good death. I think it should be CGI, and you I think, think it should be skeleton. I think it should also be a skeleton. Who should voice it? Um, well, she only really know. has, like, one line. I was say, did, does she ever talk? I don't think she, she ever talks to me in the Infinity Gauntlet. I don't think she ever talks. Like, no, talks. And all she ever does is just... She just well, stands she, there she, and she she talks. Just like, like, she has... Well, here's the thing. Like, in Infinity Gauntlet, she does not talk. It's all of her servants who talk to Thanos and say, you're too powerful for her. She won't talk to you because you're above her or you're beneath her. She doesn't really talk unless she's part of the Living Tribunal. And for those of you who don't know, go look it up. Um... But yeah, she doesn't really talk, and I don't think that, I think you can honestly get away with a CGI death and not have anybody play her. And Joss Whedon has thought long and hard about this. This has been his endgame for a very long time. 
So I think I trust him because he knows what he's doing. He proved that when he made a billion dollars with the Avengers. <laughs> so I basically imagine him walking into the studio and saying, hey, so um, I made a billion dollars, so if you don't give me what I want, I'm just going to walk out and you good luck, and you can fuck with the rest of the Marvel Universe. And they're giving him what he wants. He's been directing other, other scenes, like the scene with the Collector. He directed that. He's directed anything pertaining to any of the Avengers stuff, because that's what he does. So I think in terms of in, in terms of characters or anything like that, that's really where we're at with something like that. Other storylines, I'm not really sure because I really think that because everybody plays such a central role in the Infinity Gauntlet, I think that should be an end all game for the first trilogy of the Avengers. Here's the problem I have with Infinity Gauntlet. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm sorry, you're out there. Is that it, I mean it's been a while since I've read it, but I don't recall it ending with the heroes actually doing and much to actually end the threat. Mostly, the heroes get swept aside. Yeah, so it's I'm mostly between Thanos and Death, and when she which, doesn't talk to him, he gets all, like, up and shit. Yeah, which, he gets all emo and shit and throws the gauntlet down. Which worries me, because it really comes down to, well, our heroes were pointless. Yeah. Which, which unless they change around the storyline about it, and that was like a huge crossover where even Spider-Man was like, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> Yeah, but the point is, they were pointless. Yeah, that's the thing. That's great. 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 That's like, Thanos, he becomes an emo little bitch. That's basically what happens. <laughs> like, you know, and I feel like that won't translate to screen. Like, unless they really have a be-all, end-all fight after he drops the Infinity Gauntlet to just beat him into submission. Or if, they somehow tr or if they're somehow very clever and trick him into giving it up or something. No. Oh, yeah. Can I just say something? I think Death just walked in the room. As soon as he just started shit-talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, dude, I'm fat. I've got nothing to go <laughs> Quicksilvers and two Scarlet Witches. Yeah, I would also love to see a <laughs> Cable well, and Deadpool movie. In, 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 uh, in Draft Wars Polaris, I wasn't in Wanda. So maybe we won't be able to hear if they have one Wanda at that point. 
I would also love to see a Cable and Deadpool movie because those comics yeah. were so long. Awesome. <laughs> um, mostly, mostly because Cable Cable is really awesome, and anybody who says otherwise is not reading the right comic book. <laughs> now, aside from Secret Wars in terms of stuff I would want to see, I want to see Armor Wars. Ooh, yeah. yes. I want to see Tony going off and going semi-villain. Oh, I would love that. That would be really cool. Wasn't Armor Wars, though, technically just the second Iron Man movie? Yeah, uh, third yeah Iron Man. not really. Because Whiplash is not really armor based. No, but he became. Um, he became a repulsor tech. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's that's right. Right. But, but, but like, you should so see seeing him going after like every single kind of derivative of his armor and just and, and you know going overboard and stuff like that. Does, now, does it make me a bad person? I really want to see Moda after the movie. Oh, oh God! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I love to see Moda. I honestly I thought the bad guy in Agents of Shield, the clairvoyant, the whole. I thought that was Moda. I did season. too, actually. I did, and when they revealed it to be like who it was, I was like. That's lame. Mordok would be cooler. Oh, that's more Red Skull to come back. Come on, you guys. Yeah. Alright, so keep playing. Uh, okay. Uh, what I'd really like to see is uh, actually a crossover between both Spider-Man universes. The new ones and the old ones. Andrew Garfield would kick would the shit. I don't know, I don't know. Like, see, with that, I feel like that's entering Clone Saga territory, and I don't want to touch that with a ten foot pole. You know what's sad? I would watch Clone Saga if they could turn it into a three-parter animated movie. Here's what you do, you do that, uh, the, the, the real Clone Saga miniseries they did a few years ago. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. Although, although, with less jackal silliness. Um, I think that, I think that with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I think they have so much potential to do much more than they have. And I feel like season two is really gonna have to be where they really set, step up there the game. There needs to be more villain. They need to, yeah, I really like the setup season of, you know, the Hydra, Hydra Shield thing. I really like that, and I really like the payoff. The payoff was amazing. More but, bad drugs in that there. Um, yeah. I, really, I really want to have, like, I really liked the tie-ins with Lady Sith. I really like the tie-ins with Captain America. I really want, one day, I want, um, you know, uh, Colson to basically say, <laughs> Hey, um, so guys, we gotta go take care of Bullseye because he's beating the shit out of people in Hell's Kitchen. Let's go. You know like, I want that to happen. You know what's funny that you mentioned Batrock? I actually get to meet him in September. Ah. I won a contest through 7-Eleven, a trip to Vegas. I've never seen George St. Pierre fight, so I'm just gonna quiz him the whole time about Batrock the Liberty. <laughs> 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 I wanna see if I can get him to call Spoonie, because I know he has a huge obsession with a Batrock on his Twitter. Just keep fucking it up. It's a Batrock CD fighter. I think Taskmaster in the movies. Yeah. Yeah. He should be trained shield agents. But guys, he should be an expert. 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 I saw some uh, show he did where he was on like this uh, Quebec talk show with uh, Justin Trudeau drinking wine. That's what I'm doing. Justin Trudeau. I'm going down to the Dealers from the Shelf thing. So thank you all for coming out here.